Oh, bonjour, you rascal. You look very charming today. <laughs> I haven't looked charming since I was 16, and then there was some doubt about her. What are you up to now? Small problem. Forgot her glove, did she? Well, she might have. Couldn't take the chance. Stole it. <laughs> How clever of her. Hmm? To let you. Mm -hmm. Here's her name and address. Red roses? I don't know her that well yet. How well do we know her? White roses. Oh, I'm awfully, awfully sorry. But I've used all the white roses for this funeral piece. Who ordered that, Marie? Some messenger. He gave me $20 in gold and told me to deliver it at the Green Acre Cemetery tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Mm. See, this Mr. Colton was a good friend of yours? He is. Mm. Unless something disagreed with my practice. You mean he's still alive? Oh, no, 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 no. You see, Mr. Jackson, the stonecutter, he's got a contract for the same funeral. John Colton happened to be the federal administrator of New Orleans. I happened to be his agent. A very secret agent, without pay, portfolio, or protection. So after I visited the stonecutter, I paid a call on the nearly departed. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Hello, Yancey. I'd like to... Mr. Administrator, I'd like to see you alone for a moment. It's a matter of some importance. Would you forgive us, Miss Lee? Yes, of course, Mr. Colton. Well, what's the urgency? I brought you a going away present. Where did you get that? Stone cutting? Somebody ordered it. It's an unusual crank note, to say the least. May 6th is tomorrow. Yancey, it's just the daily threat. And you're not afraid? Of course I'm afraid, but what on earth can I do about it? It's part of my job. Come inside. I'd like you to meet the lady. If you want to keep our underground relationship a secret, I don't think you'd better call me by my first name in front of strangers. Hmm? Oh, Miss Lake. She's all right, Yancey. She just arrived from Boston. Complete stranger in town. And you know her? No, but I'd like to. She's a friend of my sister. I didn't know you had a sister. Yes, lives in Boston. Her name is Agatha. Agatha? Mm-hmm. Looks like you. Oh, there is a family resemblance. Yes, well... Miss Lake, may I present Mr. Yancey Derringer? Yancey, Miss Lavinia Lake. How do you do, Mr. Derringer? Welcome to New Orleans. Thank you. Mr. Colton tells me you've just arrived from Boston. Yes, and I've been so looking forward to seeing your wonderful city. I've never been here before. I thought I might start introducing you to New Orleans with lunch at the Sazerac. The jumbo shrimp creole is really very delicious. Sounds wonderful. Yancey, would you care to join us? You'll have to excuse me this time. I am working on an important project. Oh? If uh, you two gentlemen will excuse me, I'll get back to the hotel. I'm at the King Louis. I'll call for you at one. Fine. Uh, Mr. Colton? Uh, Mr. Colton? Hello, Pahu. He won't hurt you. This is my Pawnee friend, Pahu, which means wolf. But, but he... Pahu, I would like for you to meet Miss Lake. How do you do? Well, if you'll excuse me. One o'clock? Yes, I'll be ready. You look like a man who just found out it's spring and the salmon are swimming upstream. She's most attractive, don't you think? Yes, I do. Hang it all, Yancey. What do you do with a beautiful girl like that? What would I do? No! What would I do? <sighs> well, I would start with light lunch, light conversation, light wines, and heavy compliments. Mm -hmm. Finish with a gay dinner, gay champagne, gay flowers, gay music, then threats of suicide if she spurns you. That way, she may forget her glove. What does that mean? Well, it means that tomorrow you can return it and start all over again. Sooner or later, something has to give. But suppose she doesn't forget her glove. Ah, steal it. Are you sure we can uh, forget about this? I've already forgotten about it. Good luck. Thanks. 
I don't mean that. Fifteen hundred. Two thousand. I believe that was the amount agreed upon. Exactly. If I had known that such a pretty soul required my services, I would have donated them for nothing. Or for at least the pleasure of your company. But this time, we'll do it for money. I prefer to keep this relationship on a business level. Oh, you might not have much choice. I've had a great many clients in my time, but never one as pretty as you. I hired you for one purpose and one purpose only. To kill a man. Legally. Yes, legally, of course. But you'll find that once you've dipped those dainty little hands into even a legal killing, you tend to come under my spell. What do you mean? I mean that the pot can no longer call the kettle black. Blackmail? Uh, you might call it that, yes. Well, in that case, we can call the whole thing off right now. Oh, I'm afraid you can't do that. Yes, I have my professional pride at stake. Well, then let me warn you. Mr. Colton has a friend, a man named Yancey Derringer. I never heard of him. The contract calls for one duel. If he has to fight another, why, the price goes up. Oh, no, the second one I'll throw in is a personal favor. I'm not asking you to kill Mr. Derringer. I'm just warning you. Well, I think somebody had better warn him. Now, now, look, Spade. Spade, I think we'd better get this Colton thing over with first. I have heard of this Derringer, and he is no fool. Would you tell me something, Miss Lake? Yes. Do you really want John Colton killed? He won't be killed. He's a coward, and he'll run. That's what I want to see. I want to see him be frightened, to run. But he won't run. I won't let him. And I won't let you run either. You're much too attractive. Is this the one, Mr. Stewart? Either one. Just think of it. 27 men right between the eyes. Not always willy-nilly. Only when there's no grudge. For people I don't really like, a liver shot is considerably more painful than just as mortal. <laughs> no notches. Well, I have an excellent memory. We'll put the pistol back before you hurt the balance. Ah, oh, Miss Mandarin, always a welcome sight when I return to New Orleans. I cannot say the same, Mr. Stewart. Please remove your pistols from the bar. As the lady asks. But, Miss Mandarin, those are the same dueling pistols Mr. Stewart used at the Oaks. Thank you, Willie Nilly. Yes, ma'am. I must warn you, Mr. Stewart, that I do not fear either you or your pistols. And any attempt to create a scene at the Sazerac will bring down the authorities. That doesn't sound very hospitable. I'm so glad you understand. Well, just a moment, Miss Mandarin. Let's talk this over like friends. I... Hello, Celestial Lady. Pardon me? Is that all you're going to say? Well, that's more than you've said. Oh, but I like sincere apologies. All right. I sincerely apologize for you having been rude to Miss Mandarin. Do you think you sounded sincere, Mr. Crane? Spade, let's not start anything. We have a business date. But I don't think you sounded sincere. Perhaps if you knew who I was. Do you know who I am? You're the fellow who's standing in my way. Yancy, may I see you? Yancy? Yancy Derringer? Well, now that sounded very sincere. Please, Yancey, for me, no trouble. For you, anything. Spade Stewart is a very dangerous man. And you are a very dangerous woman. Very beautiful, untouchable, unattainable. You make it very hard on my nerves when I'm lonely. Are you ever lonely? <clears throat> Is Mr. Colton here? We were full. I think you went to the Charger House with a young lady. You're Yancey Derringer, huh? You didn't invent the weapon, did you? No, but I find that it comes in very handy. You have quite a reputation here in town. You're almost as famous as I am. 
You're not famous, Mr. Stewart. Just notorious. <laughs> You're trying to get me angry, aren't you? Well, only a fool gets angry. You see, an angry man loses his head, and he challenges, thereby losing the choice of weapons. Also, an angry man never shoots very straight. But I'd be more than happy if you'd care to meet me at the Oaks. Dueling is for gentlemen. I'm afraid that you don't qualify. That's a very nice try, Mr. Derringer, but as I said, I never get angry. And I never challenge. Good day. Good day. pattern was becoming clear. Spade Stewart, champion of the Oaks, had come to our town with a brace of pistols, powder, and ball to terminate the career of John Colton in an affair of honor. That's the insidious thing about a duel. There sometimes is no honorable way of avoiding one. Miss Lake? Mr. Colton? Mr. Derringer? Hello, Yancey. The condemned man ate a hearty meal? That's not a very good joke. Maybe it's not a joke at all. What do you mean? I mean that an ace called Spade is just about to put a bullet between Mr. Colton's baby blue eyes at the dueling oaks tomorrow morning at dawn. That's preposterous. I never fought a duel in my life, and I have no intention of fighting one now. Well, then take my advice and don't argue with anyone, not even a waiter. I'm sorry, nothing, thank you. It all sounds so fantastic. Besides, dueling is illegal. <sighs> Mr. Colton. Be on time to every funeral but your own. Miss Lake, if you would assist me, I'd like to get Mr. Colton off of the street. Not a trouble. Oh, Lavinia, how nice to see you again. Let go of me. Let go of me. Do you know me. this man? No, I've never seen him before in my life. You've made a serious mistake, sir. I suggest you leave at once. Sir, I never make mistakes. Why did you interfere? Just trying to prove... You've only me. proven to Miss Lake that I'm a coward. No. Incapable of handling hooligans like that by myself. Oh, no, John, I don't think that Lieutenant! You will escort Mr. Derringer and his friend to the calaboose and incarcerate them there for 24 hours for disturbing the peace. John. I'll take you back to the hotel. Ah, good evening, Miss Lake. Good evening. Well, we just dropped by to find out where you and Mr. Colton were dining this evening. Never mind that. The whole thing's off. But, ma'am, you made a deal. Two thousand dollars. You may keep the money. Oh. I've made a mistake, a terrible mistake. All these years, I've wanted to see him be afraid to run to desert on a fire. But he won't run. I was wrong. I want the whole thing stopped right now. Well, very well, Miss Lake, if those are your wishes. We shall consider the matter closed. You mean it? On my honor. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. You've been a terrible fool. Mr. Crane and I will be taking the night boat upriver. I hope everything works out to your satisfaction. And I hope that we meet again under more pleasant circumstances. Adieu. Follow her. I want to know where she and Colton go this evening, and if Mr. Derringer is with them. Spade, you're going through with it. Well, I've never been to New Orleans without at least one trip to the Oaks. I wouldn't want to spoil the record now. Working for the law can be very difficult, especially when the man is as stubborn as John Colton. You know, Yancey, if you're going to be coming here so often, I'm going to have to have the whole place done over for you. Is that the answer to my telegram? Oh, yeah. Say, uh, Yancey, how about playing some stud poker, huh? No, not tonight, friend Jiver. Oh, come on now. The last three times you were here, you won a week's pay. Give me a chance to get it back, huh? Matter of fact, I've got to get out of here, right now. Well, 
But you can't. You're in for 24 hours, and you got, uh, 14 more to go. Well, if I don't get out of here right now, a friend of mine is going to attend his own funeral in the morning. But I can't, Yancey. I'd like to oblige. But you know how touchy the administrator is about such things. He'd have my neck. And besides, there's soldiers outside in the hall, right outside my office door. You'd never get by them. Suppose I overpower you. Then they couldn't blame you, could they? No. But you'd have to make it look pretty good. Look pretty good. a long, long time. I'm afraid I'll be leaving tomorrow. No, not so soon. Not when I'm just beginning to know you. You don't know me at all. If you did, I don't think you'd like me. But I like you very much, Miss Lake. That's just it. You see, I'm not Miss Lake. I'm Mrs. Lake. What is it you're trying to tell me? You may remember my husband. His name was Paul Harmon Lake. Paul Harmon Lake. You presided at the court-martial, which found him guilty of cowardice. Oh, yes, Captain Lake, I remember. And ordered him shot. He ordered his men into a trap on Cemetery Ridge, Gettysburg. Deserted them under fire. That was the charge. I'm sorry, it was true. I um, think I'd like to go back to the hotel. Alone. Why, the Harry Lavinia, a pretty girl like you, doesn't run unless she's been insulted. Let's Is this go of me. Been... Whoever you are, I've had enough of you. John, don't. I'm John Colton, administrator of this city. And I'm placing you under arrest for improper conduct. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Administrator? Are you afraid to handle me yourself? Are you going to let some policeman defend this lady's honor? I've honest? taken all I can. Hold it, Mr. Colton. Yancey, you stay out of this. You've heard him. It's a big improvement over being dead. You better keep your nose out of this, Mr. Derringer. This is an affair of honor. This is an affair of murder. I just received a telegram from Mr. Colton's sister, Agatha. I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to you that she's never heard of you. What are you talking about? How much you pay him to brace this gentleman? I tried to stop him. He promised me he wouldn't do it. Are you suggesting that I would hire out to kill a man? Oh, I'm suggesting that you spend a holiday in the calaboose, Mr. Stewart. And you too, Miss Lake. The police will be anxious to talk to you. You better take your hands off, huh? Oh, come on. Mr. Stewart. Did you challenge me? Weren't you the one who said that only a fool becomes angry? That an angry man challenges and loses choice of weapons? And an angry man can't shoot very straight? Very well, Mr. Derringer. Make it what you want. Pistols, swords, I'll kill you just the same. Mr. Crane will be my second tomorrow morning. The Oaks, at dawn. Oh, I hate getting up early. Right here, right now. And the weapons? Knives. <laughs> I never carry a knife. Be my guest. them before they kill each other. You 
broke my wrist. All right, you can have him now. I'll be very happy to be your second. You see, Mr. Stewart is left-handed. That means he'll have to shoot with his right hand. Should be a very even match. I've had enough. You have one hour to get out of New Orleans. She's the one you should have run out of town. Mr. Derringer was right. She paid me to kill you. She paid me a lot of money. She never knew your sister. She just did that to get into your confidence. It's true. But I never meant it to be like this. Why did you do that? He was going to kill you. Isn't that what you wanted? No. I was wrong. So... Oh. Yancy! I'll never understand women as long as I live. Then it's fascinating trying. I can understand your bitterness towards me. You wanting to blame everyone but your husband. Cowardice is not an easy thing to accept, especially in your loved ones. But what I can't understand is... What are you going to do with me, John? All right. The first thing I'll do is to take you back to the hotel where you can freshen up. And then I know of a very charming little cafe on Royal Street where we'll have an intimate midnight supper. And we can talk over new times. Lavinia? Yes, John. Will Mr. Derringer join us? Well, Mr. Derringer has a... I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I have to see a man about a tombstone. The date is right, the inscription is right, but the name is wrong. Well, I'm afraid that will have to wait. <laughs> Lieutenant, this gentleman is wanted at the Calaboose. The charges are as follows. Assault and battery, destruction of private property, illegal dueling, and prison break. And take his Indian friend along, too. You had better be very careful of the company that you keep, Miss Lake. Because as you can see, sometimes there's no justice. When will we see you again? 30 days. Hmm. <laughs>